Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to another Game Maker tutorial. Let me show you, first off, what we're going to be doing in this tutorial so you can decide whether or not you want to watch the rest of this video. So we're going to be making an explosion generator, so it will generate an explosion, and the explosion will be dynamic, uh, so the explosion won't ever be the same. They'll always be different. And we're going to be using GameMaker's built-in particle system. I have a, I already have some videos on particles if you want to go look at those. But you don't really need to because I'll be explaining particles enough in order for you to follow along without seeing those older videos. So this is what the explosions look like. I think they're really cool. With some sound effects and screen shake, I mean, they'll be pretty impactful and look really nice. So that's what we're going to be making, these particle effects right here. Now, on to some questions that you might have. First of all, a lot of you have asked me if I'm going to continue my RPG series. The answer is yes, I will continue it. I'll be doing part 21 this week, so keep an eye out for that. It's just been holidays and I've been busy with other things. So secondly, the other things that I've been busy with is that I just released a pixel art course on Udemy. So it's on sale right now. You can get on my website. I'll have a link in the description and a link here. You can go get that. It's $5, so it's pretty cheap, but it's for absolute beginners. So it is not, if you're already really good at pixel art, this course is not for you. It's designed for beginners. People who feel like they can build games but can't do pixel art. That's who I'm trying to help here. So go check that out if you'd like to. Uh, link in the description or in this video. But let's get started. So the first thing you're going to need to do is create a new Game Maker project and you're going to create some sprites and I'm not going to show you how to create these sprites because they're really easy but I will show you exactly what they look like. So this sprite right here is 16 by 16 pixels. You can see if I edit the sprite and come in it's just a red circle with a littler yellow circle inside of it and it doesn't even have to be exactly a circle. Mine is but it could be kind of an oval and still work. So a red circle with a littler yellow circle inside of it. And it's 16 by 16 pixels and then I've centered the origin. On this one right here, this is 96 by 96, so it's kind of larger. And if you go into edit the sprite, you can see that this is a red circle with a, a yellow circle and then a lighter yellow circle inside of that with some little pointy things coming out of it. This is the impact, the kind of the center for the explosion. So I think I actually scale this one down in the particle, but it's 96 by 96 here. Lastly, you're going to need a gray circle that is 16 by 16. You can copy your other one and just make it gray like this. Now I've named mine explosion particle explosion center and explo and smoke particle and you can see I'm using a prefix s for sprite like that now uh, you'll need to create three objects so I've got an object particles an object controller and an object explosion piece now all three of these are empty you can see right now they have no code or no events inside of them they're just empty they have a name and they're an object although the, I don't remember. Yeah, that's it. And then lastly, I've created a room. The room is, um, if you go to the room settings, so first of all, it's got a black background, so I just went to background, set, the, set it to black uh, right here. And then if you go to room settings, you can see that it's named R underscore test for room test. It has six it's the width is 640 the height is 360 but I did add a view so I did enable the use of views visible when room starts the view size is 640 by 360 just like the room but the port size is double that 1280 by 720 that just scales my room up so instead of being 640 by 360 I get the double the size um, so it's easier for you guys to see but you don't have to do that Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a particle system. So inside of GameMaker, particles are set up uh, kind of in two parts. There's the particle type, which is kind of like an object. 
okay? And there's a particle system which is kind of like a room. So the particle type exists inside of the particle system. So you have to have the particle system in order to create any particles. Just like in GameMaker, you have to have a room to have to run the game and have any objects in it. You have to do the same thing with a particle system. So that's the first thing we're going to do. If you go into the object particles and add a create event, then go over to control and drag over a piece of code right here. We're going to initialize the particles. Okay. And we're going to create our particle system. Now this is really easy creating the particle system. Just name it. I'm just going to create a variable called system and do part system create. Okay. That creates the particle system and it stores the particle system inside of this variable that we created called system. And that's just easy because then we know it's the particle system. And it's part of the object particles. So if you were to call it somewhere else in the code, it would be object or O underscore particles dot system. So we know it's the particle system. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we need to make sure and destroy the particle system when the game ends because GameMaker won't do that for us. So come into... Um, Go to add event, other events, game end, and then we're just going to destroy the particle system. This is to prevent memory leaks. So part system destroy. And then just put in system. Because that references the particle system we created. Okay? You're looking good. Now let's put that object in the room. So go to objects particles and place it in the room. It doesn't matter where, anywhere in the room. So I'm just going to put mine right there. Now what we're going to do is we need to create a script. So create a new script. And we're going to call this create part type sprite. Create part type sprite. Okay. And inside of this script, we're going to pass it a whole ton of arguments. Now, initial creating a particle type has a lot of properties that you can set. So creating the particle type basically says what the particle looks like and what it does. We're just defining those things, what it looks like and what it does, how long it lives, those kind of things it can be really complicated. So I've created a script that we can do that will that will make it faster, but this script is very specific to the particles that I'm creating, and so it won't work for all kinds of particles. Like I said, you don't have to have seen my other videos on particles, but if you want to learn more about particles and other things you can do with them, you should go watch those videos because I'm only covering explosions and how you might set up an explosion in this video. So we're going to do create part type sprite. So this is going to create a particle type f using a sprite because particles have built in types like snow and rain and whatever, but we're going to use our own sprites. So we're going to pass in a sprite, whether it animates, animate. actually we don't need that, do we? We don't need that. Let's remove that. We're going to pass in a sprite, a blend mode, a min life, a max life, a min scale, a max scale, and a scaling. Okay. So what do these mean? Well, the sprite, obviously. The blend mode, that's going to make the particles kind of look brighter. It's going to affect the way that they are drawn when they're overlapped. The minimum life is the minimum life ex lifetime of a particle, and the max life is the maximum life, and that will be in steps. So 15 would be 15 steps. The minimum scale will be, obviously, for that scaling, the min and max scale, and uh, a scale of one would be the same size as the sprite that we're using. 
And then scaling is whether or not the particle will shrink or grow. Well, it's a scaling value. So if the scaling value is 0.1, then it will grow by a value of 0.1. The scale will increase every single step over the life of the particle. So var sprite equals argument zero. And then I'm gonna copy this all the way down and do six, I think, is that too many? Sprite, blend, min life, max life, min scale, max scale, and scaling. Okay, zero, wow, I got perfect amount, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Make sure you change the arguments there so you don't get all argument zero, that won't work. Okay, now we need to create a temporary variable that will contain our particle type. So we're gonna do var type equals part type create. That's how you create a particle type, really easy, right? But now we need to define some properties for it. So part type alpha two. So this allows us to give the particle an alpha. And if you do two alpha values like this, it will, it will animate between the two. So if you give it an alpha value of um, one and then a second alpha value of zero, it will start out at completely visible and then disappear until it's completely transparent. And we're gonna do, well, the first thing you need to pass in is the particle type. So we're gonna use type, which is the reference temporary reference we created there. And then we're gonna pass in 0.75 for the first alpha value and zero for the second. And these are just values that I've found work really well. So part type sprite. So now we need to set our sprite. So type, every single part type function takes the particle type at the start like this. And then sprite, and then animate should be false and then stretch should be true that just means should the sprite stretch with the scaling and we want it to yes and then random is false that means do you want it to choose a random sub image of the sprite we don't care we don't have any sub images well technically we do we have one sub image but <laughs> choosing a random one when you only have one is pointless part type blend type and um, just pass in blend. So this is the blend mode and uh, we're gonna set this to true when we create our particles which will set the blend mode additive to two. So it will blend with an additive blend mode. That might have been confusing. Basically, like I said, it changes the way when sprites are overlapped, the way they're drawn. If you have overlapped sprites, um, they'll actually make each other brighter and it looks really good. It makes it look, that's part of what makes this look like f an explosion, like fire and not like these crappy sprites that I have right here because these are crappy. <laughs> so <laughs> that's important. Okay, part type size equals type and then uh, min scale, max scale, scaling and then zero for wiggle. I don't want them to wiggle. That just means it will oscillate uh, between a s different sizes a little bit if you have it do that. So we're gonna do part type life type min life max life and then that's all. So we pass in the min life and max life and then part type orientation. So the orientation is whether or not we're going to rotate this particle at all. So we're going to do type. The minimum orientation or the angle minimum is zero. The max is 360. So it's going to choose an angle randomly between zero and 360. We don't want it to increase. We don't want it to wiggle and we don't want the angle to be relative. That means whether it's relative to the direction it's heading. We don't want that. Well, our sprites don't move, so it doesn't, or our particles don't move, so it doesn't matter anyways. 
because you can have them move if you give them a direction and speed. Like I said, this script is set up to create particles very specific to what we're doing. It won't work well with just any particle. Okay. Lastly, we're just going to return the type. That way we can assign this particle to our own variable that we want um, when we call this function. Now that's one of the hardest parts of this video. So good job, you got it done. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create one more. Well, we need to create our particles first. So go into object particles and we're going to create center particle part smoke particle part. We're going to create three particles. Okay. And we're going to name the first one explosion center part. The second one will be explosion particle part, which is a little repetitive, but I wanted to distinguish between the explosion center part and the explosion particle part. Smoke particle part. There we go. Then we're just going to create them equals create part types particle from sprite. So we already have it. We're going to pass in sprite explosion center. Um, the blend mode is going to be true. The minimum life is going to be 30. The maximum life is going to be 30. The minimum scale is going to be 0.6, the maximum scale is going to be 0.8, and the scaling value is negative 0.001. I'm not even sure if you can see that, but that's what that's what my example project has that seemed to work for me. So there you go, we've created our first particle, let's create our second one, equals create part type sprite, sprite explosion particle, okay blending is true. The minimum life is 15 steps. The maximum life is 20 steps. These are the little particles on the side so they won't live as long as the center explosion. The min scale is 0.5 so they'll kind of they can be small but the max scale will be 1 and then scaling is negative 0.01. Last particle. Create particle type. S smoke particle okay oops I spelled true wrong make sure you spell true right do we want the smoke particles to have uh, a blend mode yes we do true I guess for this case we could have just set blend mode to true and not pass it as an argument but whatever min life 15 max life 15 min scale 0.5, max scale 1, scaling negative 0.01. What I do wrong? I can't see it. Where's where's the mistake? Oh, I forgot the equal sign. There we go equals. There we go. So we've created our th all three particles now. But just like particle systems, particle types have to be destroyed. So go into your game end event and destroy the particle types. Destroy the particle types. Part type destroy. And then we're going to do explosion part let's see explosion center part part type destroy explosion particle part and part type destroy smoke particle part okay there we go should destroy all three of them like that to prevent memory leaks. Okay, our particles are all ready to go. 
which is most of the work. But we are going to have an explosion piece object. You could set this up as a particle, but I've set it up as an object because honestly we're only going to be creating about 15 of these for every single explosion. 15 objects is not a big deal. Now if you really want to worry about optimizing, you can turn this into a particle as well, but I'm not going to for this video. So. <laughs> Okay, go into the explosion piece and add an event, a create event. I, I promise this is not going to lag. If your game is lagging, it's probably something else. It's probably not these, these explosion pieces. So um, we're going to add a create event, and then inside the create event, we're just going to initialize the explosion piece. So part of how this works is we create a, an explosion in the center. And that's the right here, the center explosion particle. But then from the center, we create these explosion pieces that are invisible, but they move out away from the center. And they actually create the explosion particles and the smoke particles. So we have the explosion in the center, and then we have these objects that move out away from the center and create the explosion particles. And that's what makes the cool looking kind of like it's like there's pieces of debris flying out from the explosion that are on fire and that creates a really neat effect so that's what we're doing here we're just going to set the speed equal to random range range and we're going to do one and five we're going to set the friction equal to 0.25 this will slow down the particle pieces um, kind of to make it look like they came up and then back down and stopped and then we're going to do direction equals random 360. So we're giving them a random direction and a slightly random speed. Then uh, what we also want to do with them is we want to create the particles. Okay. Right? Because these are the pieces, the debris that are on fire. So they need, they need to create the particle pieces. And I'm trying to get room for this because this is a lot to write. Okay, you guys, uh, so go into a step event because they're going to create one every single step. It's going to create a lot of particles, somewhere around 600, but particles do not take up as much processing power as objects do. So 600 particles is not a big deal. Create the explosion particles, okay? Let's stretch this out to make sure that you guys can see as much as possible since it's going to be kind of rough because it's long. Part particles create. Now, important thing to note real quick. Particles can also have emitters, which are like little fountain. Well, not, not necessarily a fountain because they don't always have to be a fountain. It's just kind of like a thing that creates particles. And particle emitters are really useful because they can do things every step of the game without actually being a step event inside of an object. However, we don't need to create a particle emitter for this tutorial. So I'm just using part particles create, which is a function that allows you to create a particle without an emitter. So object particle system, because you have to tell it object particles dot system you have to tell it which system to create the particles from okay and then you have to tell it where which is going to be x plus well actually let's do x minus eight plus random 16 that is the same as x plus random range negative eight positive 8. I'm just doing it this way because it takes up less space. That's how uh, you they, before they had random range, that's how everyone did it. <laughs> so if you've used GameMaker when, before they had random range, it's to you'll totally get this. y minus 8 plus random 16 object particles dot x explosion particle part okay 
What did I forget? I forgot something. Okay, so we've got the particle system, the X and the Y, the particle type, oh, and the number. We're just going to create one. One particle. Okay. It kind of goes off the screen. Okay, I'm going to copy and paste this because the next thing is going to be exactly the same, except it's going to be a smoke particle part smoke particle part instead of an explosion particle part. Lastly, what we need to do is destroy the explosion piece. I think I spelled piece right. Um, if speed equals zero, instant, dis instant destroy. Basically, we'll kill them when they stop moving. Okay, now you shouldn't have any errors, should be good to go. We have our particle piece, or our explosion piece. We have our particles, we're getting really close to being ready to creating some particles in the room, creating some explosions in our room. So open up your controller and all this is gonna do is, uh, we're gonna do a mouse event, a global mouse, and a left pressed event. Now I'm using the global left press event to create an explosion, but we're going to make a function that you can use. In fact, we're going to do that first. Create a script. We're going to create a script that you can use that you can create explosions with so that, you know, if you want to create an explosion when something dies, then you can just call this script and it will do it. So here is how we're going to do that. Create explosion and we're going to pass in an x and a y that's all we're going to do var xx equals argument 0 var yy equals argument 1 now we're going to call the repeat function so that we can create a lot of particle pieces so repeat 10 times instance create xx minus 16 plus random 32 comma yy minus 16 plus random 32 comma object explosion piece okay and then we're going to create um, the center particles too because we haven't done that I wonder if I can copy and paste. Oh, yep, I did. Okay, so I saved the I saved the explosion particle one. So we're just going to do explosion center. But this one uh, we're going to create instead of randomly there. We're just going to x x and y y. So particle particles create part particles create tell it the system, then pass in X and Y, and then object particles explosion center, and then we're gonna create two of them. Because I found that it looks good with two. So there we go, we've got our function now, except that I didn't name it. So name it create explosion. Sweet. Now lastly, we've got our object controller, global left pressed event. All we're going to do is we're going to drag over a code action and create an explosion. We'll just call create explosion and then do mouse X and mouse Y to do the mouse's X and Y position. Now hopefully if we've done everything right and we don't get any error messages. Oh, we do have to create the... We do have to put the controller object in the room though. So your room should have the particles object and the controller object. Save the game, press play. And now we have explosions. Look at that, look how good that looks. Those are cool looking explosions. I, I really like the way these explosions turned out. They're pretty simple, but they look good, you know? And you don't have to have artistic skill to be able to create these, anybody Anybody can create a circle with another circle in it because of the circle tool. And then on top of that, anybody can create one of these because you just do the circle tool and then draw some little jagged things coming out of it. So should be pretty easy for you guys to do. I hope you enjoyed this 
tutorial video. Thank you so much for watching it. Once again, check out my new pixel art course. If you're interested in that, uh, check out my website. If this video helped you, be sure and like it. Share it on Twitter, Tumblr, and Facebook, and whatever social media you like to follow, Reddit, wherever. And give it a thumbs up. Make sure and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will talk to you guys later.